Hey, good morning, everybody, and happy Friday. My name is Brittany. I'm with the Seniors Blue Book. And this morning, I am so excited. Number one, it's Friday, but also I get to spend my Friday morning with Jessica from Park Royal Hospital. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. How are you? Doing wonderful. How are you this morning? Doing great. Like you said, it's Friday. I know. I always say it's Friday, and maybe that's cliche, and I stole it from somebody, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> So we're gonna learn more about you personally and learn more about Park Royal. And I wanna kind of get into the, um, I guess, the how somebody would come to know about your services and what areas you cover, all that good stuff. But let's start with you and do like an icebreaker of, tell us about yourself and maybe tell us also something that we would never guess about you. Something, maybe a hobby or something about yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, well, so my name's Jessica Bennett. I've been in behavioral health for approximately 15 years, or a little bit more actually. Um, I've always loved behavioral health. My sister was adopted and um, so we had to go to counseling and like everybody in the family had to go to counseling. And um, the, the counselor was very, um, not very friendly, and that just kind of sparked my interest in behavioral health. And um, I wanted to help people like my sister and I wanted to um, just, I wanted to be the kind of person that people wanted to talk to. So, um, so that kind of sparked my interest and I started reading books about psychology. I started reading um, college psychology books when I was in high school. I uh, got a degree in psychology, but never went for um, masters or anything like that. So. Um, I've just been doing it ever since. I'm really passionate about it and love it. Um, something that people don't know about me. Well, I don't really know anyone in Sarasota, so I could literally tell you anything. <laughs> Everybody who's watching, you are going to send Jessica an email after this. I'm going to put your email address and phone number or a text message with maybe a GIF, you know, maybe a funny little introduction. Yeah, gifts are always nice. Um, oh, so something interesting about me, um, I'm a pet lover. I love dogs. We currently only have two dogs, one we just adopted um, Saturday, but we used to have six animals. We had four cats and two dogs, but they have um, all recently died over the last few years of old age. They lived good lives. Um, so I guess that is, that is the one thing that I'm sharing today. <laughs> 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 and we'll get to know you more, of course, over the, the span of our partnership and just talking about P Park Royal. Um, tell us about Park Royal, you know, kind of give us an overview of the hospital and again, where it's located and kind of the services, like how far you kind of stretch. And of course, we're talking in Sarasota. So um, obviously, you know, anybody that's at the hospitals here or that's looking for behavioral health can refer to you. Sure. So. Park Royal Hospital is a 114 bed freestanding behavioral health hospital and intensive outpatient services located in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, and we also have ECT services um, for our inpatient. Um, we have five specialty units and um, we have a 14 bed acute unit, which is gonna be your aggressive and um, psychotic patients. Then we have a 16 bed subacute unit, which is still gonna be your psychotic um, and possibly aggressive patients, but they're going to be a little less acute, probably able to um, participate in group. And then we have a um, 26 bed co-occurring unit, and that is going to be your, um, your co-occurring with substance abuse and mental illness. And then we have a 25 bed women's unit. So on that unit, we, we take care of um, women only and we have all women staff. And then we also have what this population would be the most interested in is our 32 bed geriatric unit. And that unit is gonna be your older adults dealing with cognitive decline, uh, memory loss, confusion, and um, probably dementia. So we have the ability to assess patients. We do free assessments. Um, we do phone screenings. We can assess them and determine which unit would be the most efficient for them. 
We also do detox and we can actually do detox on any of those units. Um, so that way, if they're schizophrenia and dealing with detox, we can put them on the acute unit or if they're um, a geriatric and needing detox, we can put them on the um, senior unit. So um, we really just determine which unit is the best fit for them. And then our intensive outpatient services, we have um, IOP and PHP, which is intensive outpatient and partial hospitalization programming. Your intensive outpatient is gonna be three hours a day, five days a week. And PHP is um, five hours a day, five days a week. And um, we also are offering that virtually right now. So, you know, whereas people who live in Sarasota or Charlotte County may not have been able to attend that in the past, now since COVID-19, we have made it available virtually. So that's something that they would be able to utilize. And we also provide medication management through that. That's amazing. You offer really truly the full spectrum of different age groups and you even have with the women's only. Um, so, and I will pull up your website in just a few minutes so we can kind of talk through that so people can kind of sift through the information. Um, but I want to kind of start at the beginning of, let's say um, somebody does have, let's say there's a professional watching. Um, how would somebody know if they qualify for a stay, um, let's say in the inpatient, if, you know, whether it's somebody that is a senior that has dementia, maybe they're having they're experiencing a UTI as well and their behaviors, how would somebody know if they qualify for Park Royal Services? Oh, that's a great question. So our very basic criteria, they say, would be harm to self or harm to others. And, but that is actually very broad. So, um, so being suicidal is an, an obvious um, uh, meeting criteria. However, someone could be a harm to their self if they're just gravely depressed and they haven't eaten in two weeks. You know, um, they could be trying to starve their self to death or they could just be so depressed that they don't wanna eat and they don't know how to ask for help. Or they could be um, just too prideful or afraid to ask for help. Um, and then you have, you know, if they're, with dementia, they might be going into that next stage of dementia. And so they start acting out, you know, they start getting more confused or they start getting aggressive as we know with dementia, um, as they start to lose their ability to think the way that they used to and do the things that they used to be able to do. And they start to decline, they get sometimes get agitated and they don't know how to express that. And um, so they might do harmful things towards others or themselves. So that would also be criteria. Um, we have a wonderful, the best actually, um, admissions department that, uh, I'm not the only one that says that, everybody says that. <laughs> we just got a huge compliment that said that they were the best. So I'm just- That's awesome. What they say. <laughs> um, but we have a really good um, admissions department and I can give you the admissions number. They can call them and they'll do a phone screening. We'll ask for some documents, um, like a face sheet, some medications and different things. So we can just rule out any um, medical exclusionary criteria and just make sure that they um, meet criteria and we'd be able to take care of them and meet their needs. Um, and I can give you that phone number. Do you want me to give you the phone number? Yeah, let's, we can go ahead and give it and then I'll also <laughs> add it to the post later. Okay, it's um, the admissions phone number is 239-433-8200. Perfect. And is this a service, you know, when somebody comes in and they have an inpatient stay as well as I guess if they're doing the outpatient program, is that something Medicare, you guys bill the insurance or how does that work? So we accept Medicare, we accept uh, managed Medicaid's and then most major private insurances. If we don't have a contract with the insurance company, nine times out of 10, we can do a one case agreement, a single case agreement with them. Um, we, we do pretty well with just about every insurance. Very good. And what would you say the average length of stay would be in that mature adult or that senior inpatient stay? For the seniors, it's a little bit longer. So for Average for adult is going to be seven to 10, but for your senior, the average is like around 14. 
Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit longer for the, them to adjust to the medication. And there's just more, um, more medical things going on with them. So we need to monitor them and just make sure that they, um, there's no uh, side effects. Absolutely. And with, um, let's, I guess, put ourselves in that inpatient stay. What would a typical day look like in, in somebody's shoes there? You know, I know you said like they're obviously looking at medications and adjustments and, and monitoring their health, but if they are well enough to get out of bed and participate, are there kind of planned activities or one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions? Yes, we have uh, groups all day long. So we have um, a multidisciplinary team providing care for them. So we have, they'll see a psychiatrist um, or the nurse practitioner, psych nurse practitioner every day. They see um, a medical doctor. Um, I don't know if it's every day, but it's several, It'll, it's often. <laughs> and then um, they'll see the therapist every day. We have two uh, clinical groups. So where they talk about, they do processing, um, they do, uh, maybe grief counseling. It just depends, depends on the level of functioning of the group that's in there. Um, and then they do activity therapy as well. And then they also have a nursing group. And we also have an occupational therapist there that works with them. Very good. Yeah, it's so important to keep people, especially as we know with our seniors and our aging population, or any of us, if we were in a hospital bed or, you know, laying around all day, kind of like I do in quarantine, you know, you feel sore, you got to get up and move mm -hmm. and move and groove. So the occupational therapy would be awesome, an awesome component mm -hmm. to add in. Um, and I do have another question for you. Um, when it comes to, you know, the world that we live in now, I don't, I won't say the C word, um, but the world that we're living in now, what has changed as far as the admission process? Because I know, like at least in this area, just from me working in this area for about eight years now, there is such a, um, a lack of behavioral health services available. And I know that a lot of the professionals that are watching are gonna wanna reach out to you. And you know, what does that process look like for admission right now? So we, we have remained open during the whole um, pandemic and want to be available for the community. With the acuity level of everything going on right now, we just, um, it's, it's a needed service. Um, the mental health need has, has definitely increased. So we, um, we do screening, we do COVID screenings and um, we just try to do a very thorough, we follow all of CDC guidelines and do a very thorough screening. Um, but as far as, as anything changing other than following the CDC guidelines for COVID screening, um, not too much has changed. We are there to meet the need of the community. Um, I mean, we've got, we've been extremely busy, <laughs> you know, due to everybody's anxiety, any mental illness that anyone is struggling with um, has been exacerbated by uh, COVID. Exactly. I know even, you know, all of us, we talk about it on our, our Zoom calls. I'm just going to flip over to your website. Um, we talk about it on our Zoom calls and networking that, you know, we're all just trying to kind of support and be there for each other. But you can only imagine, you know, again, our aging population, the people that we're serving, that this experience of them feeling isolated and lonely and the effects of that. And, and you know, I think that there was kind of a feeling of a light at the end of the tunnel, just, you know, within the last 30 days, but with all the changes, um, mm -hmm. I think it's so important that we're having this conversation with you to let people know that there are services available. Um, people can uh, help you and there's support and assistance available. So I'm glad we're doing this today because I think it is perfect timing. Yeah, and that's changes. The telehealth that we're offering is definitely a big change and something that I'm trying to educate a lot of my senior living facilities on is if they have so while our um, geriatric unit is more acute and more dementia, we also have, you know, we have a unit for high functioning people who are just having um, more anxiety. Then the virtual IOP and PHP, say you have um, an assisted living facility, has someone who just moved in, they have to quarantine for two weeks. Well, they could do our PHP program for two weeks and kind of process that anxiety as it's happening 
rather than you know letting it fester and grow um, and then having a real problem later down the road. So that's a great idea for any assisted yeah. living communities that are watching or senior care advisors helping people move. I know we've talked to a lot of our um, partners are the senior care advisors that are helping people move into communities or get resources right now. And you would be an excellent source for them, a resource for those seniors that are at home and they're calling, you know, every day to their senior care advisor and asking, what do I do? And they're feeling lonely and they're afraid to move into a community. Again, you're a perfect resource for that. Right, and those are all of the to the topics that mm -hmm. we, um, we address in those groups um, for the virtual IOP. I mean, the loneliness, the isolation, grief counseling, you know, depression, anxiety. So it could be someone just like you and I sitting here, you know, high functioning um, who attends those groups. Awesome. And I kind of clicked over on your website um, to the older adult and senior inpatient treatment program. Um, and this, I want to <clears throat> just hit on this because I was going to ask about this. So it says that there's no referral needed. So there's not, you don't have to have a physician referral to, to call to you and, and to say, hey, I want to be a part of this program. Correct. Somebody could just walk in. They could look us up on the internet. They could walk in. They could call us, schedule an appointment. It does not have to be a physician. Um, of course, you have my contact phone number and it's always good for other facilities to make the contact with, with us just because then we can do follow up and you know just make sure everything goes smoothly. Um, but it's not, it's not necessary. Awesome. And this, I see this, there's a video here on your page. Can I play just like a quick minute of this? Uh, sure. All right, awesome. It's a little bit of an older video. We're working on a new one, but you can Okay. Well, I'll just play like a quick uh, kind of snippet of, of this so that people can learn a little bit more. That'd be awesome. Our mission is to provide exceptional treatment, therapeutic programs, leading our patients on a path to success from our door. But what makes Park Royal are the people who work here. Their passion and dedication, and that our responsibility from an administrative viewpoint that these people get well-trained, clear communication, and become the experts in our, in our field. These people are just, they're like angels. They don't treat you uh, when you come in like um, a patient. They treat you more of, of a person who um, is looking to, for direction and they just want to help you get in that direction. What I would like to say is one of the things that makes our program so effective here is the uh, passion of the people who work here, including myself. Um, I'm in the substance abuse recovery field because of my personal story and, and that started 35 years ago. What I have is the uh, ability to connect on a patient level and uh, also been blessed with the education to uh, be a substance abuse professional as well. No matter what happens or what the, what the patient might feel, you always want to try and, and fight that negativity and that, those negative emotions that a patient might feel through your positive actions. I mean, we can say whatever we want to say, but we need to actually do those positive things and show these people that they're, that they're more than just their illness and that regardless of how hopeless they might seem, that there's always this hope. This is an amazing no video, what. so I'm definitely going to post just... this with, with, our, with our video here. That's awesome. So sure. I just stumbled across it. Usually I would have that plan, but it just looks so good. So I'm glad we got to share that. Awesome. So um, is there any kind of last words of advice that you want to leave with people that are watching? Um, I would just say break the stigma. Now is not the time to worry about the stigma, what other people are thinking. Everyone has, and, and the, if you've never dealt with anxiety, you have definitely dealt with it in some way, shape or form in the last four months. Um, and there's no shame in reaching out we have a very caring staff that's very passionate uh, about what they do. Uh, one of the things that really, um, that I love about this hospital is the staff and just how passionate they are, how much they care and how they go the extra mile. Um, I, was, 
I feel so blessed to actually be in a, a hospital where there's that many staff members who feel that way. So, um, so my last words are just don't just don't be afraid to reach out. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask for help. And like you said, I think a lot of people, if they didn't realize they were experiencing anxiety before, there's definitely anxieties around. I think everybody, no matter what age. Um, and so definitely please use Park Royal as a resource, uh, whether you are a, you know, an aging senior watching this, a caregiver, a loved one, or a professional who works with seniors, um, or just people in general. If you're if you're peopling like we are, um, we all need help and we just have to ask for it. So so again, thank you so much for being here with us, Jessica, and sharing about Park Royal Hospital. Um, I will put all your contact information, website, everything in the post so that people can reach out to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Me too. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye.